Great. Uh, so my name is Camille Raquel. I'm the senior blind and low vision social worker here at Braille Institute. I oversee the uh, social work team. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I received my license in August of 2021 and came to BIA shortly thereafter in November of uh, 2021. Um, I've been in social services for over 10 years. I've worked with um, transitional age youth, so that's 16 to 24, adults and older adults um, in various settings, um, mental health setting, uh, criminal justice, substance use, homelessness. Um, and I joined BAA um, because really, you know, their, their values al uh, align with my own by making, you know, information and resources available to the community that needs it. And BAA does this really by, you know, offering free services to anyone on the spectrum of vision loss. Good morning, everybody. My name is Christina Chavez Herrera. I am also a licensed clinical social worker. Um, I received my master's in social work from uh, California State University, Long Beach in 2016 um, and obtained my license in June of 2021. Um, and I've been working in the field for about uh, six years now, um, going on seven, and I've worked with various populations, um, domestic violence survivors, the zero to five population. I've worked with parents and caregivers of all ages um, in providing parenting skills. I've also provided outpatient mental health therapy um, and to youth and um, to youth and adults. And um, yeah, what brought me to Braille Institute is I wanted to continue um, serving, I think, vulnerable populations that are often um, forgotten about, I think, in society. And I've learned so much being at Braille Institute, and I'm super excited to continue learning about all the different um, uh, needs and intersectionalities of the blind and low vision community. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here and happy to have you all here with us. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Helen Laura. I'm a blind and low vision social worker here at Braille Institute. I am just starting the process of working towards licensure. I just got my um, number to, to begin the process. I have been working in a social services field since about 2015. Um, I've worked also with different populations. I've worked at a regional center with um, adults with de developmental delays um, or intellectual disabilities. Um, I've also worked with children on the spectrum and their families to, um, you know, bridge the gap in, in those relationships. I've done some outpatient mental health as part of an internship during um, my graduate program, and I have uh, worked with families experiencing homelessness in San Bernardino County. I received my master's degree from Simmons University in 2019, and um, I, I came to work here at Braille Institute because um, it was a population that I had never worked with, but I wanted to learn a lot more about. and also continue the work of um, linking resources and helping people improve the qual their quality of life. Um, case management is something I really enjoy doing, and I've ha you know, had the pleasure of working with a lot of students already, and I've learned so much more from them um, than they probably have gotten from me because they're, it's just their experiences have been um, just very uh, eye-opening. So I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I look forward to working with more of you. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I'm here at Braille in a counselor role. So I started my social work career um, in a lot of ways very early in life, um, just in terms of kind of my values and how I, I view the world. So when I finished, I w attended USD um, here in LA for my undergrad. Uh, with a psychology major and applied theater minor. And then I went on to do my master's in social work at the University of Denver, and I completed that in 2015. So since then, I made my way back to California. I've worked in hospice and with um, oncology clients. So since my master's was in health, in 
a master's in social work with a health and wellness concentration. I've really geared most of my practice within the health and wellness and medical side related to holistic health and how to really build genuine meaning and purpose with clients that draw on their their natural strengths and um, coping strategies and and things as Helen said that that they bring to the room as well with their their own experiences. So I, I've worked with a lot of seniors and that kind of in certain ways led me here um, to the Braille Institute and, and it's been a wonderful opportunity to really get to know uh, the population and, and how to provide emotional support specifically related to the adjustment to vision loss and all of the, the different feelings and challenges that arise um, internally and, and dealing with the, the community and, and the larger systems. So I, I'm very happy to, to be here. I'm excited to get to share some of what we've been working on here um, with all of you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Schwartz. I am the social work intern um, for this academic year. So I've been here since August um, and I'm here till the end of the academic year at the end of April. Uh, I'm currently um, an MSW candidate at the University of Southern California, and it's been really a pleasure to um, be at Braille and to get to know um, the students and the population that we serve. Great, thank you everyone. Um, so what brought social workers to BIA? Um, BIA started to recognize that there was an intersectionality between those adjusting to their vision loss and also facing other barriers. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, for new students that may look like, um, you know, requiring more support at home, uh, financial resources, transportation, how am I going to get to and from BIA, um, the family's adjustment to vision loss, and also, um, you know, the the person's emotion, the person who's going through vision loss, the emotions that come up for them. Um, so, you know, what might happen is, you know, somebody may think like, I just, I have other things going on in my life right now. So maybe right now is not a good time um, to start, you know, uh, adjusting to my vision loss. Um, and so it's a missed opportunity um, to join Braille Institute. Um, also, for some time, it was required um, for those enrolling at BIA to have a doctor's referral before they could really start receiving services. But for some people, you know, that may be that they haven't seen their doctor in a long time um, and maybe they didn't know where to begin. So again, you know, they just decided not to move forward um, and there was no social worker, you know, to help guide them through this process. Um, now, if a person did make it through the initial intake process, they had their low vision um, evaluation. Um, at that point, you know, it's it's very overwhelming. It can be very overwhelming for some people. Um, it's a lot of information, and you know, sometimes somebody might, you know, ask like, "What exactly does BIA do again? And what were those classes?" I think I heard, you know, uh, that they could help with technology, and I, I could really use that. Um, but maybe not not being able to reach out to somebody for various reasons. Um, so, you know, BIA offers a lot of really great classes, programs um, and, you know, community. The staff here is uh, very supportive, um, but if a person hasn't made the connection to a staff, it, it can be really hard to reach out. Um, for current students who expressed uh, the need for more support, um, our class instructors, O&M instructors, and other staff were really dedicating a lot of their time to providing social services versus their respective expertise. Um, and I think this made it really difficult um, to manage the needs of both social services and orientation and mobility, for example. So it may take longer for the staff to get to a person um, because the wait list might be longer or spending more time that session doing social services instead of, again, you know, orientation and mobility. Uh, so, you know, BIA expands services to include social workers. Uh, BIA's mission, you know, this is straight from the website, you know, is to positively transform the lives of those with vision loss. And one of the ways they do this is by reducing barriers to accessing free services and the classes. Um, so it only makes sense really that they, you know, 
realize the need of the community, um, and then they bring in social workers to address both the environmental needs, you know, the family, the financial support, uh, transportation, things like that, um, as well as the emotional support uh, that people need around adjusting to vision loss. Um, so our so the social work team joins BIA um, as of last summer of 2021. Christina was the first social worker here. Um, and then uh, Emily, Helen, and Jennifer uh, joined shortly after. Um, we are developing the social work program in real time. Uh, so that means that while we're developing this program, we're also working with students, as Helen mentioned. Uh, this is really great because it allows us to make changes and shift depending on the type of needs people have. We're able to identify how we can make services more efficient so that we can really focus on the quality of the services that we're providing. Uh, you know, the goal, the goal is really to be a part of the student's journey here at BIA um, so that we can, you know, catch those people who may want to join our cooking class or tech class, uh, but are feeling overwhelmed with their adjustment to vision loss. Um, you know, those who haven't seen their doctor and don't know where to begin, um, or those, for example, who have financial issues and, you know, may need assistive device before they can even think about, you know, enrolling into BIA or any of our classes. Um, and, you know, we social workers in BIA, we can address some of these barriers, you know, by having somebody with the person from the start, from the time that they start here um, at their journey at BIA, um, so that the individual can really focus on living a meaningful life, um, however they envision it. Next slide. Um, so what do we do? So the social work team's motto is for the student, with the student, by the student. Our motto is meant to show the process that we have in mind in order to empower the Braille Institute students. We're here to provide support for the student to ensure that basic needs are met, to work with the student in order to help them obtain necessary resources, and then eventually the work could be done by the student in order to further advocate for themselves, to ensure that they have the best quality of life, as well as remain engaged here at BIA by way of classes and other services offered here um, in order to develop new skills um, to be able to apply to their daily living, um, you know, any training with technology that they need and just, you know, creative outlets as well. Um, as Camille said, you know, we are here to be part of the student's journey at Braille Institute. The social workers want to ensure that the barriers to services are reduced so that people come to BIA that come to BIA can take part in all the services that we do have to offer. Um, we can assess what else is going on in an, in an individual's life in order to, um, you know, uh, work together to help manage the stressors. Um, the social workers also uh, will create a support plan with the students. The support plan will uh, will ensure that we provide individualized support within Braille Institute uh, via internal referrals to services such as classes, connection point, and orientation and mobility, for example. And we will work collaboratively internally with other areas of service within um, BIA so that students can reap the benefits of what we offer here. With the support plan, we can ensure that we are meeting all of the students' needs. And on top of that, social workers have also began to facilitate um, living with vision loss groups, um, support groups, as well as co-facilitating a group um, this term, which we'll talk touch upon a, uh, a little bit later on. Some further uh, services. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Christina, to interrupt. I think um, Gabriel, do we need to call somebody in? Yeah, Camille, I'm actually calling that individual right now and I'll figure out how she wants to join. So um, oh, I'll okay, be calling her in the background if that's needed. OK. OK, thank you. All right. Sorry, Christina, go ahead. No worries. Um, so um, some further services as social workers that we provide here at Braille Institute is also um, advocating for our students. Um, we recognize that there are a lot of challenges um, out there, um, especially for people who are visually impaired or blind um, or adjusting to it um, might have to learn new ways to, you know, make those phone calls, access 
uh, access technology or access re re resources via the internet, etc. So um, we are here to support them with making those calls or providing them with the resources um, that they are looking for or in need of. Um, and in some cases, we are also, um, um, you know, maybe making like a three way call or supporting them in getting their needs met by connecting them to external agencies if needed. Um, a big component as well of what we do um, since us as social workers with our masters and social work degrees, we do have um, the ability to provide like a mental health background component okay. to it. So a lot of our case management is therapeutic in a way. It's not necessarily therapy, um, but um, a lot of our skills involve, you know, being empathetic, um, using our communication skills, um, you know, being there to be able to meet the needs of the student where they are emotionally, where they are with their adjustment in vision, um, in vision loss, where, wherever they are. And this takes, um, you know, this approach is basically seeing the whole person at, for who they are, um, not just for their vision loss, but also for their housing need, for um, where, they're, where they are emotionally and where they are spiritually. We look at all those components to make sure that we are meeting, um, we are assisting the student meet their needs in all those areas and remain functioning in all those areas as well. Um, so like how Helen had mentioned, we do have the support plans and those are person centered. It's focused on, um, you know, what that what the individual needs, um, not necessarily making it general for everybody. It's very focused on their goals and what they need to um, they need to acquire in order to, um, you know, live success successfully and independent. Um, so with that, we provide resources and linkage as well to not only within Braille Institute, but also outside. Um, we announce. Um, is there some technical difficulties or is it just on my end? Probably just on my end. OK, all right. Yeah, so uh, we, <laughs> we also provide some weekly student announcement. Um, sorry, we provide resources. Um, we announce resources on a weekly student announcement email that goes out to students. So on on there um, in those emails, our students are able to see, um, you know, a community resource that they can benefit from. And we are also very ha happy to help or assist them with that resource if they are interested. Um, and along with that, you know, one of our major goals here as a new uh, social work program is we want to build those community partnerships. We want to be able to uh, connect our students with external agencies, um, but have that uh, partnership, have that communication. Um, and I think it, it, you know, it'd be vice versa as well. So um, that is uh, some of the things that we do here. Great, thank you, Christina uh, and Helen as well. So uh, a little bit more about the um, counseling component. So as as Christina mentioned, there's absolutely a emotional and, and psychological supportive role to case management. Um, if you think of times that you've been most stressed or, or really um, feeling angry or, or sad, it's very distracting and sometimes it's it's so therapeutic to just have someone help with kind of logistics and working through what actual issues are, are um, things that you can control. And um, so with the, the counseling services, we take a moment to kind of put all that aside just for, for the um, about 50 minutes or so. And what we offer um, at this time is short term adjustment counseling. So it's typically about six sessions with some flexibility just in terms of things that may come up. And, and again, we are able to be individualized in terms of um, the needs of the students. But the, the general model and, and what we offer is that it is um, very specific short term counseling. So it's um, typically weekly, so we would set up a 
weekly appointment. At this time, it is over um, telehealth, so either video chat or telephone, um, depending on the client preference. Um, I do work with them again weekly to, to see if there are some days that, that you just don't feel like getting on a video. That's that's fine. And, and you know, again, it's really creating this space together with the client. That's that's their time to, to dig into the, the really um, challenging and sometimes upsetting thoughts and feelings that come up. And um, I, I don't know if you know, you personally can can consider your, your own experiences if you've ever spoken with a therapist. Um, it is really important to feel that that you can connect and and I am um, a, a sighted person, but I, I have worked with a lot of clients who have similar situations so I can kind of help pull those stories and and just normalize experiences and um, really help to, to work through the emotional and and for some spiritual if that comes up because again it comes back to that holistic wellness of, of mind body and spirit and how do you move forward with both honoring the the challenges and and the the truly difficult and and complex feelings that come up around losing vision and related challenges losing independence and and things like that and and what that means to to rebuild a life that feels empowering and and positive for for the clients and and their families um so it uh it, it is always relating back to the vision loss piece because it's it's through the braille institute and and there is really a significant need just in focusing on that that you know this this is a really big deal that's that's happening in in people's lives and um so the the short-term model um it does seem sometimes like a a drop in the bucket with with these big feelings that you're dealing with but but it's it's giving that time to to acknowledge the the adjustment and the transition so it's it's often people who have either recently lost their vision or are having changes in their vision um or something related to specifically that that loss um if there are concerns or or presenting problems that the client feels and i as a clinician am, am considering a recommendation for longer term counseling, then that's something that we would talk about towards the end of, um, in the counseling world, we call it termination of towards the end of, of our therapeutic relationship. We would talk about what what does it look like? Are you interested in, in maybe a referral to a clinician who might themselves be blind or low vision or um, specifically focused on on grief and loss and and that type of thing so again it's very individualized and that's another reason that that it's so important for us to to develop these community partnerships so we can really have kind of a, a warm handoff as we call it where where we've gotten to develop these relationships with the clients and and really built that that mutual trust so it's important to us to, to be able to have a partner that we we feel comfortable and and uh, working together collaboratively for for longer term supports. Um, and my role is as the licensed clinical social worker, but we do also have um, interns as well. We, this year we have our wonderful Jennifer. Um, if you would like to jump in, you're, you're welcome to. And uh, we look forward to future interns as well. So moving on to another piece of, of what we do, um, the one on one counseling is fantastic, but it's it's not always for everyone for, for different reasons or, or sometimes you want in conjunction uh, a more group support setting where you can talk to peers. Um, so we do have two different types of offerings for classes that our social work team is also involved in. Um, the first would be our living with vision loss support group. So this is a group um, that Braille Institute has been doing for a while. I'll, I'll just read the description um, for those who aren't familiar. It is a, a support group um, style type meeting. It's meant to explore topics related to things like denial, anger, stress, acceptance, and how to work towards living a positive and productive life with vision loss. Uh, so it's it's a a positive reframe in some ways, but it's also a, a realistic place to talk about what's going on with with other peers who. Um, are experiencing similar situations. So, so that is something, um, a group that meets weekly. Braille Institute has offered it in the past, but this is since 
we have new newly hired social workers. The first time we have social work specific staff leading this type of group. So that's an exciting different kind of spin on on the groups that we've had. Um, if some of our students who've been here a long time want to try something different, um, that's a, an option. It does meet weekly and we have a couple different ones. Um, it, we at this time have groups in English and in Spanish. And um, we also co-facilitate with our wonderful O&M staff um, the condition-specific groups. So, for example, right now we have retinitis pigmentosa and macular degeneration. Uh, so it's an opportunity for students with the same condition to interact and discuss issues that they're facing, uh, trying to, to navigate the world around them as as best as best they can and it's that group meets monthly so they have different options for different schedules um and i i know um uh, helen if you'd like to to speak on this as well um, <laughs> um yes thank you thank you yeah so the the co-facilitation of the uh, condition specific groups, like Emily said, we did get to work with um, our orientation and mobility team to provide these in English and in Spanish. Um, you know, it's a lot of psychoeducation for for the students to learn about their specific condition to try to understand it a little bit better. And then our role is to help them, you know, kind of reflect on internal and external challenges as well as how to navigate them and, you know, provide tips on how to overcome some of those challenges that they're experiencing in this um, monthly group. So it's been a really exciting opportunity to be part of and you know, I'm looking forward to doing uh, more with the orientation and mobility team um, with these groups. Um, and you know, I just wanted to add here also, um, you know, since the social workers have started, um, you know, as Emily mentioned, you know, these are it's new to have this social work spin, you know, to the living with vision loss. Um, and then now we can work with um, our O&M instructors, you know, to co-facilitate these condition specific groups. Um, we've also worked with, you know, child development. Christina co-facilitated uh, a workshop with uh, the teens there. And so these are ongoing, you know, uh, our relationship in these types of, of classes and workshops are ever evolving. Um, so that's another really great piece to this. Great. Um, so that is the end of our presentation. Uh, does anybody, we're going to open it up to questions. Um, so you can either type in a question and uh, I think Gabriel will help monitor that or you can just unmute yourself. Um, and if you're on the phone, can somebody remind me how, how somebody can unmute themselves if they're on the phone? Star, Star six. six. Jinx. I think that was a star six. <laughs> yeah. A question. Yes. Hi there. I think somebody uh, said that they had a question, but now I, I can't question. hear. Yes. Hi there. Hi, my name is Arianne. And hi, Arianne. um Hi, I'm a former employee. I'm visually impaired. And when I was working, oh, I have two questions. I hope I can, they're very brief. So uh, may I um, present two of those um, questions? They're very yes, brief. Please. Of course. Okay. Thank you. When, uh, when I was employed there, um, they had a program for the uh, deaf blind. Are there social workers um, going to be on staff for the deaf blind because they have unique needs also and they need support? And I was just wondering, is this something that Braille Institute is still going to provide for them? I can feel that, Camille. Uh, thank you for your question, Ariane. That's a, an excellent question. And I'm sure you're aware um, about the retirement and departure of um, our beloved Jane Lutz, who really yeah. was the person for that program. Um, and with her retirement, Braille Institute has prepared uh, for the situation to continue to support the deaf blind program um, by hiring um, two tactile ASL interpreters 
Um, and so they work with one of our student advisors to guide that program to sort of pick up where Jane left off. Um, and what that presents for us is an opportunity while deafblind students are on site at Braille Institute um, to utilize those ASL tac tactile ASL interpreters interpreting skills um, to ensure that they have access to the social work team. And of course, when it comes to connecting to resources for deafblind individuals particularly, um, those interpreters are great, uh, what would you call them, connectors to those types of services, because of course, sometimes they're gonna know more about those supports in the community than our social workers do, just for lack of you know, interacting with that population. Um, right. But yeah, that is how we are supporting the deafblind students moving forward. Um, and we look forward to bringing them back to the center. Uh, because we have determined that our deafblind students definitely find on-site programming more enriching. So that sounds that wonderful. Great. Okay. I'm. I'm. Yes, you uh, answered my question, and I'm very proud of that of BIA. Another question is: um, Thank you. I've been. I have been very. Um, I've been visually impaired all of my life. And I have friends that have been totally blind and visually impaired all of their life also. And we also have um, situations and where um, we need support and maybe we need to rap about what challenges we have in the world and what struggles we're still dealing with. And I was wondering, um, I know the concentration now seems to be for people uh, with vision loss, but there is still the population of us who um, who have been blind most of our lives, and we've uh, navigated pretty well through the journey of being blind, totally blind and visually impaired. But we still have challenges and struggles. Um, is there a possibility? Maybe in the future, if it's popular, that there might be a support group for those of us. Um, what better term would be would be veterans of um, being blind and visually impaired. I think that is a great suggestion and definitely um, a great idea. And um, I'm actually really glad you brought that up because again, we're still developing this pro uh, social work program specifically, but bringing in new new support groups, bringing in new classes, bringing in whatever service we can provide to the students that we serve is definitely our goal. So I I think I'm pretty sure we all all you know, everybody on my team loves that idea and I think we can definitely push some for something like that to happen. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much for um, listening to me. No problem. I hope thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ariane. Um, you know, and just to uh, comment also, um, you know, we're, as we mentioned, we have these uh, condition specific groups that we're leading monthly, you know, and as we're, you know, we're, I think we're coming into our fourth month and, you know, we're realizing the need for this group um, and, you know, people seem to really appreciate it and also give us a lot of feedback on, you know, other types of group that might groups that might be helpful or meeting, you know, more than once a month. And those that that kind of feedback is really helpful for us. And, you know, BA has just been so great. Um, at, you know, listening to the needs of the students, as many of you know, um, and so we're able to tailor, you know, a, a lot of what we're doing um, to those needs. Do we yeah, have that's a great, any? great question. I just wanted to add that that it's a, a really good point that we, as Camille said, we're we're building it in real time, and and we're really really open to suggestions from students because it's it's very important that that the program is collaboratively made with with the the students here, and it's it's really to to best serve the needs that are are coming up, and and I think that's such a, a important point to make sure that as many students as possible feel that really. Um, personalized attention. Thanks, Emily. Um, 
we had a couple of rapid fire things happen when it comes to the chat and raised hands. So I'm going to read Bradley's question first. Um, Bradley Day has a question in the chat. And then Valerie, I saw your hand just went up, so we'll go to your question right after Bradley's. Um, Bradley says, I believe this may have been mentioned throughout the presentation in a sense, um, but what services do you provide to help introduce a person with recent or veteran vision loss, as we're calling it, uh, into the newly visually impaired community? Um, does this include introducing to fellow BIA students uh, to connect with? I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question exactly. Um, this is Christina, by the way. Um, but I think, um, you know, so the social work team started during the pandemic. You know, unfortunately, we haven't gotten to experience what it's like with all the people here present in, at the center. Um, but in order to, so services that we provide to introduce people, um, I guess, is it to other students um, that are part of the visually impaired community? Um, I'm not sure if that's the question, but you know, um, our support groups are definitely um, one of the ways that um, people can get like, get to know other people that have, ex that are experiencing what they are experiencing. Um, and, um, <laughs> And something that I know that we want to, what we want to do once we do open in the center is, you know, us as the social workers, we're going to be a point person, the first person that they get to see uh, as they walk in through those doors and kind of give them a, a brief introduction of what, you know, Braille Institute provides, but also take them to their low vision appointments. Um, and, you know, we also plan to continue following them throughout their journey with Bra Braille Institute. So if they do want to, um, you know, join or get to know other peers, then, you know, we would link them to the support groups or, um, you know, there's also external resources as well of, of the visually impaired community um, that get together and socialize and do hikes and um, do tandem biking, bike rides or have like yoga classes as well. Um, and that is another way that we would connect them to, to socialize. Uh, <laughs> And and just to piggyback off of what Christina was saying, um, on top of the the support groups, you know, there's such a variety of offerings of classes where they can, you know, join art classes if that's something that they're interested in and meet other students that have maybe a same interest or, you know, the cooking classes, like they can learn from other students that way. So they'll get an exposure to to other people and, you know, just, you know, uh, find people that they might connect with outside of um, Braille Institute. So our goal is to help them um, once they start here with, you know, the the low vision consultation, like, you know, um, support them in remaining engaged with us so that they can take advantage of all of our offerings and and really learn, um, you know, connect with the instructors, but also with, with other peers um, just to get even further support um, from the BIA community. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, sorry, I have a, I have just another piece to this, um, which is, and and I again, not sure if I'm answering this question um, clearly, but but um, just to say that, you know, sometimes we have um, incoming students. You know, this is, you know, their vision loss is very new to them. It's really overwhelming. A lot of things are coming up for them. So when they first start, they really you know, maybe they don't want to take classes, you know, and, and they, they turn down, you know, living with vision loss or a cooking class. They love to cook, but I'm just not ready and things like that. And so, you know, the idea is that the social worker is going to, you know, be with them, you know, and as everyone has mentioned, you know, with the per, um, through the person's journey um, so that, you know, we're really building a relationship and building trust with this person and getting to know them. And so, you know, as as we're building that relationship, We'll check in with them again. Hey, you know, it sounds like you really like cooking. Maybe this is a good time, you know, to take this cooking class. There's a lot of really great, you know, students there. The instructors are great, you know, and we have the the insight knowledge because, you know, we've been attending these, you know, uh, classes as well. And um, and and maybe hopefully, you know, the person would give, you know, these classes a chance. 
Great. Um, thank you all for fielding uh, Bradley's question. Um, and he thanks everyone uh, for providing great thorough answer. Um, he wanted to clarify, you know, uh, that he's seen examples of, uh, for example, youth uh, who have been bullied at school or adults who begin losing vision and worry about driving or cooking food. Um, and but I think you pretty well explained that, you know, the social work team does help people connect with others who are experiencing similar things like that. Um, let's move on to a uh, raised hand. And we've had Valerie sitting in the, <laughs> the team's lobby with her hand up for a few minutes now. So Valerie, go right ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, mine isn't so much as a question as it is a statement. Um, first of all, uh, Emily, who I had the pleasure of of getting to know when I, I'm let's start with I'm from the San Diego um, Braille Institute and they have been wonderful. But Emily was I was introduced to her because we kind of lost our one and only person that did any kind of social work and help with all of the all the millions of things that the social workers do. Uh, find to help us, um, but in the event of, of that counselor moving on, um, I met Emily, and I think the process that you go through there with like the five-day counseling, getting to know the person and maybe filtering them off to their different um, classes or seminars that they may need for them are just so different with the amount of people and so different within each other that I think my own personal experience, the Braille Institute, when I finally got in to get involved with them was so overwhelming because they offered so much. And there were so many things that I wasn't even aware of that, yeah, that might really help me. And there were so many things that I knew I needed. It, it was, I was so happy to be there, but then I was so overwhelmed with the amount of available um, classes and seminars that were available to me and just managing my time and trying to figure it out as as someone just starting at Braille, it would have been so beneficial for me to have, you go through the assessment, you find out all the things that you can take and what they can do for you or the different people that can help you. But it would have been so nice to have one person assigned to me, like a social worker, that can walk me through the steps. Like maybe I, I really need to do cooking, but yet, I need to realize that having the ability to do the cooking, like mobility um, and other things, like how am I going to, you know, measure things and stuff like that. Um, it would help me to have somebody say, here's where you should kind of give you a, a pathway of which direction to go instead of just having a, a, a road with a million different lanes and and roads to travel down so i think that to me was the most confusing thing but the braille institute um thank you so much all of you guys for everything that you you, you you're doing for so many people with so many different issues it's just amazing to me that you guys can do that so i just wanted to say that san diego could i wish they would develop um a counseling program like what you have there because I think it's very good excellent excellent work that's all <laughs> thank you Valerie I, I appreciate you saying that and and we we really appreciate it we we definitely we as in the the Braille Institute organization really recognizes the the need and and the the value in kind of having that and and one of the silver linings, if you will, of, of COVID and things going virtually is that it, it created some space to to revision, re-envision how to to do this 
this program that, that feels the most supportive for students. And um, I, I definitely understand we, we you know, seek to, to offer as much as possible and, and it, it can feel like a lot sometimes. It, it's funny to feel overwhelmed with good things, but it's, it, you're right that you're trying to, to create a schedule while you're dealing with adjusting to, to different things. So, so I appreciate that. And, and we are, the LA team in some ways is a, a pilot project and um, we, we hope to, to be really successful and, and part of what will enable us to do that is, is hearing feedback from from students ongoing about what's working, what could be better, uh, what you've you've wished you had in the past that that now we can help for future students. That's really, really helpful feedback. So I, I encourage you and, and other staff here to, to encourage others to to. Speak up if you have suggestions or, or thoughts that that we um, are eager to hear and um, I wanted to address too about kind of connecting students that that we've really been trying even within the virtual setting to to help to connect students with each other as as much as possible when it's kind of you know, mutually consented and everyone is is on board we we really try to to be as helpful as as possible um to as many students as as we can so i appreciate the the feedback and um thank you for sharing thank you and if I can add, um, this is Christina again. Um, uh, Valerie actually reminded me that um, her mentioning that she's um, a student, you know, from the San Diego Center um, reminded me to mention also that the blind and low vision social workers were actually also providing support to the other centers, not just LA Center. So, um, you know, we do have Helen and myself divide the centers from, you know, Coachella Valley, Riverside, Santa Barbara, San Diego, um, Anaheim. Um, and if we do get referrals from those centers, um, one of us are assigned to to work with the student um, as well so that they are also receiving some support. Um, so yeah, just wanted to throw that in real quickly. Thank you, Christina. Um, and thank you, Valerie, for your great, I mean, it wasn't a question necessarily, like you said, but amazing input. And I always love to hear about um, folks' experiences with our services, and it actually gives us feedback um, that we use to improve things as well. So that's wonderful. Um, another uh, thing in the chat that is not necessarily a question, but very important and very nice, uh, Ros Rosario uh, Ribleza from uh, Department of Mental Health um, is telling us that they have an access for all underserved cultural communities group, um, and that consists of the deaf, hard of hearing, and physically disabled individuals and their advocates. Um, and there's a monthly meeting with this group every second Wednesday of the month. Uh, and she says to feel free to contact her uh, if we are interested in joining or if any of our students might be interested in joining. Um, so we do have your email in the chat, Rosario, and I am sure that our social workers will be in touch with you um, and they'll be adding um, this group to our list of resources for our students if it's not already there. Um, so thank you for dropping that in the chat. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel, mm -hmm. Gabriel, are there um, what Rosario um, inserted? Um, are there groups for for the um, blind and visually impaired as well? Yes. Yeah, I did, this, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. This is Rosario. Can can I can I stop? Yeah, yeah, we have that. In fact, as a matter of fact, our Former uh, co-chair is a blind is a blind person, and yes, please please join us. And we, in the meeting, you could discuss all the issues. And we have advocates there. There are actually some of them. Actually, this blind person is uh, connected with the state, with the state, with the uh, governor's office. So feel free to to email me, and I'll give you some information and the, the details. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Perfect. Amazing. Love Thank making you, connections Rosario. like this. Um, I don't have anything else from the chat. Um, oh, sorry. We do have one question from Karen. Um, Karen is a student, uh, MSW student part time, um, and she is interested in becoming an intern at Braille Institute. Um, that is something that 
I don't necessarily manage. I don't know all the details. Emily looks excited, though. It's always cool when people are interested. Um, but can you guys field that question? Yeah, so uh, Karen, thank you so much for your question. Um, right now, um, we are taking um, interns from USC. That's um, that's kind of our, who our partner is right now. Um, but if if you want, my my contact information is going to come up shortly after this slide. Um, you can just um, shoot me an email or give me a call, and we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, kind of off off of this. <laughs> Thank 